Okay, so I'm just getting ready to fit a twin disc conversion to my uh, Kawasaki Z1A, 74 Z1A. First thing I've done, I've got it on the workbench and I've strapped the rear down as carefully as I can so that the front wheel comes off the ground so you can get the front wheel out without too much uh, problem. Okay, so it's on the bench and I've taken all the parts off I want to take off, which was pretty straightforward once I've uh, drained the uh, brake fluid, of course. So here uh, are basically most of the parts for a twin disc conversion, uh, apart from one particularly important part. Uh, item to note is that that's a right hand uh, caliper. I say that because they are available for Z1s, but they are not currently available for KZ900s and Z900s. The calipers are different and I don't think they'll fit and a left hand caliper will not go on the right hand side of the brakes. So at the moment, March 2017, uh, you cannot get a new caliper for a Z900. Okay, but for a Z1A or Z1B or Z1, they are available. Okay, um, so those are most of the parts, pretty obvious. This one is the uh, twin splitter uh, for the uh, to, to feed the discs. You can get away with using the old splitter and add just a longer bolt and put both hoses off that, but it's a bit of a bodge. And they're not that too expensive. Uh, here's some other bits at the top. That's the... Uh, uh, the cover, the dust cover uh, for the front wheel, which you're going to dispense with. You don't need that because you're going to put a disc where the cover used to be. It's a bit of a shame because they look so nice, but if you want a second disc, you need to do that. Also, this is the original uh, brake splitter. Well, it's not a splitter because it was only for a single use. And on the right there, that's the uh, brake light switch. Now, I've tried everything, but I cannot get that off. I've heated it, I've put penetrating oil, I've, I've used excessive force with it, but it won't budge. So rather than completely wreck the thing, I've bought, I just bought a new one because they're readily available. Can get that one out, save my life. Okay, uh, what else we got? Uh, on here, so this is the original disc. Note that the Z1s have a six bolt disc. KZs and Zs only have a four bolt disc, I think it is, so they're not interchangeable. So this is the one, the existing one, and then on the back, that's where the uh, new disc is going to go. Oh, just knocked over the mud guard. Don't forget, you take the mud guard off, and I've cleaned all that and rust proofed it. Amazingly, amazing how much little bits of rust are in there, despite this being a fairly new mud guard, and the bikes had little use. Just note that that how amazingly things rust even though you know you're not putting through winter conditions now the bit of course i'm missing is called a brake disc because as i speak now they are not available apparently someone is going to make some but they won't be made for about another six months so i've had to try and find a second hand disc which i have now done also, you've got a date mark there, 8V. At the moment, I'm not quite sure what it stands for, but if you're finding another disc, if you want to be totally uh, perfect, you want to get a try and find a disc with a similar stamping to the one you've already got on there. Um, but it doesn't matter. But no, they're not available at the moment, but apparently they should be available soon. I think they are available, ironically, for the Z900. But of course, what isn't available for the Z900 is the brake caliper. There you go right over here so we've got the bike on the stand one thing i have decided i'm not going to do at the moment anyway i am not going to replace the brake master cylinder now that's a half inch cylinder kawasaki fitted uh, a 5 8 uh, cylinder when they were using twin discs uh, because it just moves up much more fluid I'm, i think i can get away with just using a half uh, the existing half inch uh, so I'm going to try that. Basically, if, if it doesn't work, changing this master cylinder isn't going to be uh, a massive job and they are available. Okay, uh, so this is where the uh, splitter is going to go. That's uh, hanging down there. That's the end of the pipe from the master cylinder brake lever. 
and then the twin pipes will come off there. Here we've got the uh, bottom fork legs. Note that in, in, luckily Kawasaki made the uh, fork legs uh, to take a second caliper, so you don't have to find a second fork leg. Uh, let's think, yeah, okay. And also down here I've got some of the existing parts. So I've got the original left-hand side caliper, uh, the cable guide, and then the uh, hydraulic, the two hydraulic pipes that go with the existing uh, tape, uh, existing disc brake and then there's the uh, the bottoms of the forks the fork caps there as well and somewhere hiding will be the front uh, there it is the front um, oh, blimey can't think of the word what do you call it yeah goes through the bearings yeah that one uh, the word's gone but you know what it is and um, so they, they easy to come off uh, uh, they undo easily once the fork legs have been uh, removed. Wheel spindle, that's what the word bloody thing is, a wheel spindle. I'm just going to show you this briefly. I wasn't thinking about doing that, so I'm not ready, but I will. So this is the, uh, this is my trident, which also has a twin disc conversion. But on this one, they never made a right hand uh, disc, uh, right hand fork leg to take the caliper. So you, on this, you have to buy a whole new fork leg as well as a car and so on so that's a real pain so good news uh, for the Kawasaki that they already have the fork leg ready to take a new caliper right I'm going to start assembling in a minute loosely assembling because I'm still waiting for my second hand brake disc to arrive as we speak so I can't put the whole thing together but I'm just going to dry assembly just check everything's okay uh, one thing I have done I don't know where I've put them but I've got the, uh, here they are, I've got the uh, unions to go in the brake, uh, the brake splitter and I've reused the copper washers and what I've done is I've annealed them. That means I've just heated them up to cherry red and just let them cool down and that means that's re-softened them so that when I put them back on I should get a good seal again. Either that or obviously use new copper washers but I forgot to order any. So that's why I've annealed the existing ones. If you don't anneal them, the copper goes hard and sometimes they won't reseal once you've taken them off. Okay, I think that's about it for now. Right, I've started to uh, fit the uh, splitter onto the uh, bottom yoke and I've immediately hit a problem. The uh, original single disc uh, unit uses a long bolt here and a short bolt there to hold it on because it's a different uh, shape to this. This being a double uses two long bolts and I've only got one. So what I've done is I've just very, I've had to take the washers off this just to get it long enough to fit and I've just put it in temporarily because of course I don't happen to have a spare of the right size. So uh, you do need two long bolts to fit the splitter, not one long, one short. First thing I did, there's a problem, typical. A uh, bit of dry assembly going on, but making sure I've got a bit of grease on the uh, new caliper bolts. As they can seize up pretty, uh, pretty straight away, so a bit of grease on the caliper bolts, important. The new uh, hydraulic hose, Oops, I'll try and get this damn thing to focus, focus. New hydraulic hose, but note that with the uh, rubber collar on the actual hose, it means that the actual pipe is too long, it's in the wrong position. So obviously that rubber collar needs to go over the union, not on the actual brake pipe. There we go. That rubber needs to go over the union here not on the actual pipe so that's what that's the way it is on the other side <laughs> that's the original and as you can see the uh the rubber on it goes over the uh union okay so what i've done is i've split the grommet open with a standing knife and i, I ship i forced a screwdriver underneath the grommet so obviously I wouldn't cut the uh, the actual hydraulic uh, hose with the standing knife, which wouldn't be too good. 
the original uh, grommet on the other side is split exactly like this to enable it to go over the actual uh, uh, end piece. Okay, so uh, I'm fairly sure that's how it was originally. Yeah. So with the grommet now moved down over the top of the metal thole on the end of the hydraulic pipe, the pipe now fits perfectly into the caliper. Everything's just loosely assembled, finger tight, just checking that everything does fit. And there's a good reason for that, as you can now see. Uh, notes so far. Number one, this may seem silly, but make sure your mud guard is on the right way around. <laughs> Easy to put it on backwards. Uh, calipers fit inside the uh, fork legs, not on the outside. Um, everything fits pretty okay up here. Uh, these uh, throttle cables were a bit close, I felt, to this uh, now that this is further out, but it seems to work okay without rubbing. Uh, everything, again, I'm now waiting to get new bolts. I'm going to replace both of these bolts with stainless steel. Oh yeah, I left the, um, I left the cable guide for the tachometer on the cable when I took it off. And that, when I, if I can use one hand, which I can't, that will eventually go up and bolt around that bolt. Don't forget that. And similarly, don't forget the cable guide on this side for the speedo drive, because it would be awkward to try and fit it in afterwards. Um, okay, I've still, and that's the uh, connection here for the uh, uh, for the brake light, which I'll do, I'll do shortly. Okay, but it's looking all right. Everything seems to be in place. Everything seems to be working okay. Yeah, I've got these uh, cable guides in. At the back, they're open, which is very handy. And then they are closed at the front. So I've uh, loosely fitted the mudguard, then slid the back ends in, and then put in the front, put in the front bolts afterwards. Okay, and uh, it's fairly obvious which way around they go. Just be aware that on this side, this bracket has two loops, one of which, of course, is for the speedo cable. So far, so okay. Right, discs are now ready to go on the wheel. The second disc has finally arrived. This is my first disc which is uh, 8V, 8V, and that's, so 8 is the year, which uh, I think is uh, 73, and V is the month, which I think is December, so this disc was manufactured in December 73. This one is a zero, this is a new disc, a new second-hand disc, it's a 0A, so I think that's 75, January 75, I think. Okay, so probably for Z1B. So uh, I've just painted up the discs a bit. Not fantastic, but just a bit of hammerite, to be honest. It's not uh, Concord, but it just looks a lot better. Cleaned up all the wheel and everything. And now we're ready to put discs on. So I've got all the uh, original uh, disc bolts and fasteners. And then there's the new ones for the new uh, discs. It's amazing, actually, look at the difference. I mean, they're new-ish, but they're a couple of years old. You know, the bike's never seen rain or anything, but it's amazing how much just in a couple of years sit in dry storage, occasional use, how much they uh, um, degrade. Okay, uh, I'm going to bolt those on and then hopefully get the wheel on. Okay, uh, discs are on. Just a couple of things to note. Uh, first of all, the, uh, there's bungs in the uh, holes where the second disc goes which is really good. Kawasaki put them in to stop the uh, threads getting all gunged up when there wasn't a second disc. And as inserted the new bolts, then it naturally pushed those rubber bungs out of the hub. So that's good. Also, I tightened these up. There's no torque, as far as I know, no torque setting for the disc bolts. However, on these, on this, uh, um, the, uh, oh, blind what they're called, you know, the uh, retaining, uh, tab the tab washers for the uh, for the bolts you can see when I've tightened these up that they've all uh, spun and distorted like an S shape uh, I don't know if they're just cheap tab washers because if you compare them with the back with the uh, original disc which has also got replacement tabs on it 
you can see that the tabs are all nice and uh, still nice and straight on that one. They're not S-shaped. They, uh, so what you might want to do if you want to stop that happening is either A, buy decent tab washers and B, put a bit of uh, WD-40 uh, behind the heads to try and help the head turn and not turn the uh, tab washer with it, the locking, uh, the locking washer. Okay, time to uh, get the wheel into the bike. Right, getting ready to put the wheel on. First thing I've done is to take off the new caliper because if the calipers are both on, you can't uh, fit the wheel between them. So I deliberately only fitted that finger tight. So hopefully with just with one caliper on, I can get the wheel in and then put the other caliper back on afterwards. We, um, just refitting the speedo drive. Um, it just comes off, it just falls off really when you take the wheel out. So I just added a bit of grease in there. The grease was a bit uh, manky. It's pretty obvious which way this goes in. There's teeth on the uh, dog and they uh, go in first to mate up with the, the teeth on the actual drive. And it just uh, slips in. Phew. And then these two uh, these two wings here uh, obviously line up with the gaps here. And that's what drives them. So... Just uh, sit, literally just sit there we go just sits just sits in there don't matter if it falls out again just put it back on later on it literally just sits on there okay all ready to go in now oh well a bit of argy bargy uh got the wheel back in i have to say it really didn't want to go the tire didn't want to go in past the uh the mud guard stays uh but i loosened this caliper off uh you know, i didn't take it off but i loosened that right off again and eventually it went in, but I must say it's a bit of argy bargy. Would it be easier to put the wheel in and then do up the mud guard afterwards? I don't think so, just trying to get the bolts in really. But uh, yeah, I don't seem to really get the wheel high enough off the ground is the problem. And I think maybe the forks are, I don't know, fork settled or maybe it's just not strapped down as hard. You know, maybe it's settled and I could have strapped it down a bit further to try and get the wheel a bit. The higher you can get the wheel off the ground, the easier it is to get in. Anyway, it's sort of in situ hopefully i'll get the fork caps on without too much trouble we'll see how we get on okay inserted the uh, wheel spindle back in uh, and tightened it up it just goes in that end and then screws uh, into the speedo drive and um, i've just tightened it up on the uh, on the flats with a couple of adjustable spanners now in a dear old manual it says tighten the wheel spindle so i have just tightened it not excessively uh, there's, you know, it, it tightens up against the inner wheel bearing races, so it doesn't need to be dead tight. Um, and then when I get the wheel in, I'll make sure that everything's uh, spinning freely. Right, I've loosely uh, refitted the right hand caliper before I've tightened everything up just to make sure everything's okay. Uh, even though the caliper had a little chock in it to uh, keep the uh, pistons open, as soon as I took the chock out, it closed. So I just uh, use a screwdriver and just uh, they, they uh, just to leave them apart again no problem at all because of course there's no fluid because they're brand new and uh, I had to do the same on this side when I put this one in I just had to just open them up and if the caliper is working fine then the uh, pistons just go straight back in obviously there's no fluid in the system so that makes life a lot easier okay so everything just still just loosely fitted and uh, I'm going to put the caps on one thing about the, uh, the 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 bottom fork caps, one little tip is, um, don't uh, when you put them on, don't then uh, just tighten one side up, one end up, because what will happen is you'll end up tightening it sort of at that angle. If you, let's say you tighten the front one first, and then they'll always be at that angle. So tighten them evenly, and then when they're tight, check the gap front and back to make sure that the caps are on evenly and that one side isn't tight and the other side got a big gap on it. We'll check that later on. Okay, I've uh, just uh, I put the wheel in position and I've just chopped the wheel up using a, a brush and a screwdriver, just lifted it slightly so the uh, wheel's high enough so I can get the uh, fork caps on, get the nuts on the fork caps uh, because you can't lift the wheel and get the caps on at the same time. Okay, now professional lifting equipment that is. I nearly forgot, don't forget, when the uh, wheel spindles are still loose, turn the uh, speedo drive 
so it's in the right uh, position. Once you tighten these uh, nuts up, obviously you can't move that. So I think that's looking about the right position. Okay, but do make sure you get that sorted. And don't like me, put it on, having forgotten to put the uh, uh, inner part of the cable in first. Okay, I'd better do that now. So there we go, I've tightened up the uh, the uh, fork caps on uh, on this side and I've tried to get the uh, the gaps equal either side, they're about equal. I mean the main thing is make sure it's not totally clamped up one side and open it the other side, as long as there's a gap both sides that's the main thing. Okay so the fork uh, caps have been tightened up and Calipers are still loose, but I'm spinning the wheel. Uh, my advice is, whenever you're doing anything like this, just check that everything's spinning and free at every stage. Uh, if you don't check, when you get to the end and the thing's jammed, you don't know which bit's jammed. So if you spin things every time, and you know it's okay, and then suddenly if it stops spinning, you know it's a thing you've just done that's the problem. Okay, so check, keep checking all the time. I'm going to tighten the calipers up now. Tighten up the brakes and uh, just go through everything and check that everything's tight before I, and then, then it'll be the fluid. But next thing is just to go through and double check that everything's tight, everything's free, one step at a time. Okay, <clears throat> I've tightened everything up. All seems to be uh, spinning freely. Um, I haven't put fluid in yet. I'm just about to do that. I'm going to let the bike down off the ramp. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to undo these straps because I've not been happy with them. I've been worried about them damaging the exhaust and so on. So I'm going to undo those, let the front wheel down, and then bring it back down and bleed the uh, bleeder system. Ideally, I bleed it with the front wheel off the ground. And obviously, I can check it a bit better, but um, the sooner I get it off those damn straps, I think the happier I'll be. Right, so uh, disc conversion's all on and it's working. But what I thought I would do stupidly was I haven't replaced the master cylinder. The master cylinder is only a half inch diameter master cylinder uh, on these bikes with a single disc. And if you want to convert to twin disc, you're supposed to fit a larger diameter master cylinder, five eighths of an inch, which moves more fluid. And I didn't do that because I thought I could get away with it because I did on my other bike. It works okay, but I can get the lever. If I push hard enough, I can get the lever right up uh, to the grip. Obviously, it's not right. It's working okay, but it's not right. So I've had to buy a 5 eighths, uh, 5 eighths diameter master cylinder, which is exactly the same, except it should have the legend somewhere on the bottom that says 5 eighths, just uh, to show that it is larger diameter, moves more fluid, and that's what you should have for the uh, twin disc conversion. And, me trying to save money now made myself a lot more work. I've got to drain the system again, fit that, and hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll work this time. So that's why the uh, bleed is on at the moment because I'm just about to start draining the system. More messy brake fluid. If I'd have done it the first time when the system was dry, it would have made life a lot easier. But never mind. Okay, so I'm going to bleed the system. Uh, I've taken the uh, taken the rubber off. It's amazing what good condition it is underneath the rubber and then I'll drain the system and undo this nut, undo the clamp obviously that holds the mass cylinder off and hopefully it's a pretty straightforward replacement, hopefully we'll find out. And uh, there we go, all done. Got the new uh, 5 8 master cylinder on and uh, all seems to be good. Uh, okay, got a good lever. I think it will probably bed in more as the pads uh, wear in, but I've double checked for leaks and all seems okay. Just want to remember also, bear in mind that uh, its uh, brake fluid is hygroscopic, so it soaks up water. And so I always have these damp uh, rags, and so any sign of brake fluid at all, just wipe them with a damp cloth, and that will immediately neutralize the brake fluid. Otherwise, if it sits there, it will uh, etch all the paint away and do nasty things. The advantage is that it is hydroscopic, so just wipe it with a wet rag or pour water over it, and it neutralizes it, gets rid of it. 
because you don't want that hanging around. Okay, uh, oh yeah, a couple of other things, just for originality, you know, that makes much difference. But I've put the uh, original top cap back on, not the one that came with the replacement. And I also put on the uh, original uh, cap, which is very slightly different than the original nuts. Not that makes much difference, but you can do that if you want. And there we go, hopefully that's, uh, that's job done. One uh, twin disc conversion fitted and hopefully that will really improve the braking.